I ended up taking this job as a tea boy and, and really and truly I was very blessed because I ended up working with some incredible artists, probably some of the best sound engineers in the business during that period of time. And I had the opportunity to go to the cutting rooms because a lot of reggae guys somehow had money to go and cut acetates. And the, you know, the chiefs, the guys in the white coats, there's all the engineers in those days wore white coats, um, over at Pi Studios could never understand. We all spoke English, but they couldn't understand what these black guys were saying. So they'd send me over there to fucking translate. <laughs> and this is in England, not that long ago, you know? But what was cool about that, we always have to take a positive from the negative. From there, I learned about the, how the cutting rooms worked and the whole, whole idea about cutting your own dub plates because these were massive sound men at the time. Mo and Bassa was coming in there all the way from Birmingham. You know, ma you know big sounds. Um, um, th there was a, a really massive sound from South London. God, he had a lot of money. I can't remember his name. He was huge, because he would cut like eight acetates in, in, in like about four hours, and that was in one session. How much would that cost? I'm telling you, they used to rinse you out in them days. So they were the only ones with the Neumann cutting machines in them days, yes? I'm t you're probably talking about, in the early days, about maybe 50, 80 pounds a session which probably would have been the equivalent to a few hundred pounds nowadays. And you're talking about a sound? It was two pounds to get in the dance, you know what I mean? So they had a lot of money. Um, so anyway, I ended up being in situations where I was doing this translation. And that was the first idea when I saw somebody bring in a quarter inch tape and, and the engineer would set it up, you know, on the machines and then you know, play the thing and it will go from here to a record. And I was like, fuck, that's a dub plate. And if anyone smelt acetates from Transco when it first comes, got a kind of interesting smell, a little bit like oxide, but it's a smell that stays with you. My engineers used to describe the smell as death, but for us it was life. You know, that was the, the birth of whatever you were doing.